You may have seen in my video about my QAVR build that I had my TS5823 video transmitter hooked up to my antenna in a, a less than optimal way. Uh, first of all, all my antennas, I just keep things simple by buying SMA because uh, that's what's on my Fat Sharks. That's what I had when I, I started buying when I first bought the Fat Sharks. And I've just always stuck with it. And I've used these SMA to RPM, RPSMA to SMA adapters. Um, but you know, these things introduce loss, a small amount of loss, but, but it's definitely an amount of loss. This is reducing my range. And, and frankly, so do these things. These connectors here also <clears throat> introduce loss. And again, a small amount, but it's not ideal, especially when we're only working with 200 milliwatts. I need as much as we can get. So there's a thing you can do. You can direct solder this pigtail to your transmitter. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Now before you get too hopeful, you need to know, in case you don't, that this is not just any old wire. You can't just go get a length of, uh, you know, 18 gauge wire from your, from your hookup kit and solder it on. That will not work. This is coaxial cable and it has some special characteristics that make it appropriate for high frequency RF uh, transmission. Basically, if you just have a length of wire, that length of wire is going to be part of your antenna, and it's not going to be a good part of your antenna. It's going to radiate. It's going to change the tuning of the antenna. It's going to be bad. Coaxial wire, as we'll see, has a braided sheath around the outside, and it has a very specific design uh, that makes it have a certain impedance uh, at the desired frequencies, uh, and that's all very important, and you can basically... Only use coax that's designed for use in the frequency range that, and with the impedance type that uh, you or your radio expects. Okay, so uh, so anyway, the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get this SMA connector or RPSMA connector off your board. And if you have a hot air station, that's relatively easy. Uh, but I don't have a hot air station, and so I think the easiest thing to do is to just cut off cut off the connector and then manually desolder the legs it one by one as opposed to trying to get all of the solder off at once now you could do that with a dremel tool with a cut off wheel if you were very careful uh, you should not try to do that with some diagonal cutters diagonal cutters are only designed for soft copper and they're not designed for hardened metals like this brass uh, and you will, and you can see I've done it if you look very closely. You can see the little nicks in my cutting edge if I can get focus here. I don't know if you can see that, but there are some little nicks in my cutting edge where I have broken the rules. So only use diagonal cutters on soft metal or you'll deform the edge. So wha what I do happen to have is I happen to have a jeweler's saw, which is basically just a very, 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 very fine hacksaw. So I'm going to go and I'm going to just cut this off and I'll be back and we'll get on to the next step. Okay, no, that didn't take long at all. Uh, very easy. Uh, so you can see that I've got the SMA or RPSMA connector cut off flush and we still got little legs on here we're going to desolder. So I'm going to get my soldering iron. I'm going to get just a little bit of solder on the tip. If you have flux, you could use that as well. And let's see if I can get this guy off of here. Just you see how easy that came off? Just a little bit of solder on your tip will help. The factory solder is usually lead free uh, because ROHS. And um, if you don't know what that is, go look it up uh, or don't. And it's really, it, it really hates to reflow. And so uh, that's not too bad though. That's coming right off. You know, see now now it doesn't want to do it because I've lost my solder a little bit so a little bit of solder there we go and this finally this pin here okay got it okay so now let's examine this a little bit just so you understand what you're seeing these pads on the outside here are grounded and there's one, two, three, four, and that's largely just for uh, physical strength to provide additional mounting points. Uh, you don't need that much grounding, but they're all grounded. 
and any one of them can be used. You don't need to use all of them in this approach. And this center pad here, that's where the signal goes in. And you can see that we've got these outputs here on this board, and they have been bridged with solder to these pads here on this back circuit board. So we're going to want to make sure we don't disturb that, because this is the actual RF module here. We've got some solder here going up to this metal uh, shield here. We want that grounded as well, so that needs, that needs to be grounded. And that's just to reduce the amount of RF interference and noise coming out of this thing. So we don't want to mess any of that up. We don't want to desolder these, these pins here from these pads. Uh, you know, oh, and we don't want to lose the solder bridging. We're going to want to check after we're done that this is still grounded. Okay, so signal in the middle, ground on the outside. The next thing we need to do is we need to prep our coaxial cable, and I'll get right to that. So we're going to snip off. Let's make sure we snip off the right end. This is the bulkhead, so that's where our antenna is going to go. This is the end we're going to snip off. And, ah, uh, you've ruined it now. Ruined it now. And I'm going to very carefully strip just the outer sheath. I don't want to cut the inner braid. There we go. Perfect. So the outer sheath is off, but not the inner braid. And then I'm going to fold the braid back to expose the the plastic, uh, the dielectric, and I'm going to just twist that like so. Fold it back. Now you want to be, you can't show this on camera because it's too small, but you want to be very careful to look for any loose wires, any tiny little strands that are loose because those can, uh, those can short out the connection in a way that's not ideal and, uh, and make trouble for you later. So check for that snip them off or, or fold them into the twist. Oops, there we go. Fold them into the twist. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, you can see, you see the wire, the copper wire there in the center of the dielectric? No, you can't. A silly camera. Well, yeah, you can't see it, but I can see it. I'm going to just strip, I'm going to just strip back the dielectric without cutting the inner wire. Okay, so that's the number one mistake you're going to make, is you're going to cut the whole thing. So I just need to snip it and start over. Another way to do this is if you have a utility knife, you can take the utility knife and just kind of roll on the table very gently. That may work better. Well, I said I was going to show you how to do it. I didn't say I was going to be any good at it. <laughs> I have done this before, in case you're wondering. Just, uh, it's just, it's definitely a little bit fiddly and a little bit uh, delicate. Okay, so that's not good. I've, yeah, I've ruined it. So I pulled, I've started just pulling this out now. And this, uh, this one is ruined. So you can see I've started just pulling this out. And if I keep pulling, oh, hey, look, there you are. There's that uh, center connector. Alrighty, I've ruined this one. That's uh, that's the chance you take, I suppose. Fortunately, I have another. Alrighty. Let's give this another go. Okay. Okay, so this time what went wrong was that I cut all the way through the the braid and that you, you don't want that you need that as well so I will snip it off and try again I'm having some bad luck here folks I usually I swear I'm usually better at this but at least I'm showing you all the possible things that can go wrong I'm making this uh, seem harder than it is uh, although I guess if it's your first time you might also make some of these same mistakes uh, there, uh, as you can imagine, there's people who could just do this all day long because they've gotten a lot of practice at it. I've also got the curse of the camera on me, of course. So I'm going to try very carefully to snip this. Just, just, there we go. Interesting, very interesting. So very interesting. This is not a solid center conductor. That's part of the reason I was having trouble. I did not realize that. This is a stranded center conductor as well. 
Now I'm going to take this off camera real quick and just make sure I haven't made any mistakes. Look at it really close with my with my feeble old folks eyes. I'm just looking for any loose strands that are going to stick out and potentially make electrical contact where I don't want it. Okay, we're looking good. So I'm going to see if I can give you a very close look at this one. Okay, see what I've done here? Now, it's very, very important that there not be, that there be just a little bit of this dielectric right here so that there, the central conductor is not grounding to the sheath. Okay, very important that that not happen. Otherwise, your antenna will not, will not be an antenna. Okay, that's what you're going for. Now, I am going to, what I like to do is, so let's think about how we're going to make this fit up. The center conductor is going to go here, and then the sheath needs to go to any one of the ground pads. And probably the easiest thing to do is going to be to split it like this, and put the ground on back, and the center conductor on front. It's probably going to be the easiest thing to do. It would be nice to be able to have this coming off like this, or like this, because that's actually how it's going to be mounted on the copter. It's going to be mounted going back. I'm not sure. You can't you can't flex this too much, or it'll it'll affect the RF propagation, and that's not good. So I'm not sure I'm going to be able to pull that off very easily. I guess I could do it like this. Yeah, mm, I could. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. Uh, the first thing I like to do when I'm working with stranded wire is I like to tin the wire before I snip it so that it just sort of stays together. Let me do that. Okay, that's tinned. Check my dry fit. So that's a little longer than it needs to be. We'll shorten that up a bit. And ideally I want a little bit of overlap with the dielectric here, I think. Um, I'm going to need some mechanical reinforcement here. Let's get this bent to the side. We're looking good here. Okay, I think we're ready to solder. Now, actually, this is probably a little too aggressive a tip for this job. I don't want to go crazy here. Uh, so I think I'm going to put a smaller tip on, and I'll come back. All right, here we are. We're back. Here's what I've decided to do. This is going to need some mechanical reinforcement. This little solder joint here is not going to hold up to the vibration and stress of a, uh, a multi-rotor <clears throat> all by itself. It's just going to it's going to crack eventually. Uh, solder is strong, but it can also be brittle. The wire is going to crack somewhere. It's no good. So I'm going to do it like this. I've bent these down just a little bit. Let me make it so it can focus. I'm going to do it like that, and then I'm going to do either tape or hot glue, or you can also do epoxy if you feel like it. And that's how I'm going to solder it. And this tape is also going to help hold it in place while I solder it on camera for the world to see. Oh, great. It's moved. Great. Hang on. Ah, you guys. You guys have no idea. It's killing me. Can you just... Okay, I'm just going to tack one of these without focusing on the camera because this thing just will not hold still. It's being a real pain in the butt, as, of course, as always. Yay! Yay, I did it! Well, guys, this is not going to be a how to solder tutorial because I it's really hard to capture soldering on camera. So I apologize for that. Yeah. This, this, that, right there, that's terrible. Don't do that. I shouldn't do that. That's, that's a huge joint. It's no good. <clears throat> I'm going to get...
my friend the forceps and get in here and see if I can make this a little better. That's more like it. Oh yes, that's way more like it. <coughs> That's a proper solder joint there. Not standing off a million miles away. It is now soldered up and it should be good to go. Notice that I have not got too sharp of a bend right here. I did not make a sharp right angle there. That's really important. You want to keep this curve gradual. The ground doesn't matter as much. I guess it matters the same amount, actually. No, that's the same amount. I guess it matters the same amount. It's an AC circuit. You gotta have uh, current flowing b both ways. And also, you're gonna wanna check when you're done here to see if you have continuity. Because you don't wanna have accidentally shorted something that you shouldn't have shorted. So I'm gonna check for continuity between ground and the signal. And it should not be there. No continuity between ground and the signal. Ground, signal, nothing. And also let's make sure I didn't remove the grounding on that on that side. Yeah, okay, good. So the shield here is still grounded as well. Now if you have an antenna attached, you will have continuity because the antenna is part of the circuit and it closes the circuit but so do that test with an antenna not attached there should be no continuity between the center pin the signal pin and the ground pin okay and that's it you're done uh, the last thing I am gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put some hot glue or some tape or something to reinforce this and uh, you could even epoxy it if you felt like it there you go though you saved yourself a little bit of signal and a little bit of weight hope that was helpful happy flying